What is better than to be in the Lord's presence? To be in His presence tonight. And we're thankful to be in His presence tonight. How great it is for brothers and sisters to be together. I want us to read a verse and then pray. We want to read a verse from Rom Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Let's uh, close our eyes for a moment and let's pray for the word from heaven to come to us tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you and worship you tonight. Because you are worthy of all honor and glory. Lord, thank you that you set us apart from others that we might have a relationship with you. Help us, Lord, every day. To change and to be molded into the image of Christ. We know that when you created man, you created in your image. Help us change today. We change our earthly frame to be returned to that. Image that you created us in the moment. Lord, may you speak through our minds, through our hearts, our words, that we might truly change. Speak to us, Lord, that we might glorify you. Speak to us, Lord, that your living word might come amongst us tonight. Amen. The word that, the verse that we read together, we're going to we're going to take a small devotion this verse uh, on the idea of change. Not that you look at the pattern, look, as, look the same as the people of this world, but to change and be transformed. How can believer have, have this transformation on a daily basis so that we do not look like the world around us? If the world cannot take like a situation between us and the world and the people around us, it cannot see a difference in us and the world, then we need to ask whether there is a true change in our lives. Is it a daily change and transformation in our lives? So that a little by little, day by day, that we might be more and more like the picture of Christ so that we can maintain that relationship that we created uh, from the beginning. This was the, we, he gave us a new life and as we accepted Christ we were to grow daily into his likeness. So what can we do to have this transformation to take place on a daily basis? So there is, uh, we can maybe call it a prescription for the transformation and the change of the new age of our mind. You know, when you wake up in the morning, for sure that you don't look maybe too great, your hair is messed up or your face is kind of crumbly or you have some pain in your body when you first wake up. But, and you feel it when you wake up. I'm not, you know, something's not right. 
وابدا اقول وحدد من فين الالم من فين الحاجه الغلط دي وابدا اروح لو انا عندي مثلا صداع عندي دور برد عندي اي حاجه فبروح للدكتور الدكتور يقول لي بص دي دي الحاجات اللي تشيل من جواك And so he seeks help from the doctor. So if he wants to have this true transformation in his life, to be different from the world, what is it that we can see from God that he has to have this on a daily basis? What is the reason or the benefits that you take when you live with the daily basis? What happens? What is the prescription that we need? What is many times we wonder what God is doing or the decisions in his life. And then at the end, a person wants to make a decision. He tries to figure it all out. And then at the very end, trying to make a decision, he says, I wonder what God really is about this. He leaves that to the end. You know, there's some very important decisions in life, whether it's buying a house or getting married or buying a car, whatever it is. You know, what are you going to do to make this decision as a believer? But we need to see God's will first uh, for these decisions, not the last. So let's look at, this, uh, at the prescription for this transformation and to this uh, difference in the world. Let's look at how people were and When they asked for this change, when we when people look at somebody, Michael is not brother Michael. Something in the world is different. What happened in their life? First, they ask. They ask. They want to know Jesus. When we sang this song, what is better than to be in your presence to worship Him? This is the experience of the one who has been in God's presence, who is asking for God's presence. Let's look at the story of Zechariah, or Zacchaeus, I think, in Luke 19. We're going to look at a, at a few stories like this. We're not going to read all the story, uh, but we're going to look what the secret is for the change, the key for the change with these people. There are several verses that show us that help us to understand what the key is in his life. As a person, we're looking as a believer, what do we What do we ask? Do we ask for you wake up at uh, at five in the or is there a time during the day that you ask to know Jesus, to see Jesus? Not just to get up and to pray, but just to open and open the Bible and read a verse. But did you ask really to see Jesus? نشوف زكريا. في عدد ثلاثة بيقول وطلب أن يرى يسوع من هو. ولم يقدر من الجامعة. في عدد أشخاص من زكريا. لكن في آخر القصة. But in the end, in the end of the story, we see we know who he was, a tax collector and all. But we see this. This is also a story. The also reminds me of the story of the woman who was had the bleeding, the illness of bleeding. There was a big crowd around Jesus. But when she touched him, it made Jesus stop. There was one person who was faithful, who trusted, and we, he knew that he was going to be out because this woman had touched him. The same way with Zacchaeus, 
في ناس كثير عايزه تشوف المسيح بس في ناس عايزه تشوف المسيح مش عايزه تشوف But many people wanted to see Jesus, but not really wanted to see him. You know, they they heard that he did great miracles and things. But Zacchaeus, he had a real desire in his heart to see Jesus. He wanted to know who he was. He wanted to know him. So it gave a very important note here in the these verses. فلما جاء يسوع للمكان بتاع الشجر الواقع نظر الى فوق كلمه ربنا بتقول نظر الى فوق يعني المسيح وقف الموقف وشعر ان في قلب هنا فوق الشجر في قلب هنا عايز of a man in that tree that wanted to know who to see him. You know, if you just do a superficial prayers or reading of the Bible, you won't see Jesus. You won't see him. But if you but if you really want to know him, he will stop. So if we say, Lord, I really want to see, I want to, to change, I want to, to do you. He, that is the beginning of the change. And we saw it in Zacchaeus' life that he had a complete change. And he took, he gave half of his possessions to the poor. And if he cheated, he paid them four times. So he, there was a complete change in this man. Was this a really a change in his life? Yes. Everybody saw it. They couldn't believe it. There is something, something, something is different in you, Zacchaeus. This is not the same Zacchaeus that we knew before, the one that used to take money more than he should. But he made a change. He experienced a change. So if you look in a mirror and you see something not right in your clothes or your looks, you go and you change it. But if you didn't go and look in the mirror, or if you went out and without checking, but you won't listen, but you won't believe it, but you won't trust him. But Zacchaeus, he wanted to see Jesus and he really surrounded him. Let's see another thing in this idea of change. Confession. If we're going to be transformed, there has to be a confession of sin. Every day we need to be confessing our sin before Christ. Just as Zacchaeus did. اعترف ان هو كان ظالم الناس دي لما قال ان وشيت واحد يعني انا كنت في حق الناس دي وان وشيت واحد ارد هي اصلا ديد ات هي وينت هي التوبه الحقيقيه انك تعرف انك تقع فين في غلط فين خطيتك اذكر من اين سقطت وتوبت تغير وارجع لف Turn, turn, you change direction. This is true repentance. Changing, uh, changing direction. So this is what happened in Zacchaeus' life. He changed completely. There's another story as well. Actually, it's a song that uh, the writer uh, It's Psalm 51. We know it well. And we see David talking about his, his prayer of confession. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and clear me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have sinned and done what is evil in your sight. 
خطيئتي هذه دائما اليك وحدك اخطات وعارف قدام مين هو غلط في حق مين غلط روح ليرى مظبوطه وندرس خطوات التوبه حقيقيه شخص بيقدم توبه هذا هذا صورته بحق الباطل السيرة تعرفني حكمة طهرني بالزوف فأطفى اغسلني فأبيض أكثر من السر من السر قلبا نطيا اخلي ودي كانت خط... نتيجة خطية بيت شبع يعني المزمور ده كتب بعد الخطية اللي عملها مع بيت شبع وبعد الخطية اللي هي عملت فيها الزنا وبعد ما نسام النبي كمان راح وعرفته وحطه قدام الخطية بتاعته لكن قال له نجيني من الدماء يا إله خلاص فيسبح لسان الدماء يا رب افتح شفتي فيخبر فمي بتسبيحه احسن بنضاق في 18 إلى سهيون ابني أصوار بشليم حين اللي يعمل برضه الصيانه الدوريه دي حاجتين وصيتين من وصايه النعمه المعروفه لينا كلنا بس خلينا ناخدها برضه ونفكر فيها الصلاه الصلاه مهمه جدا في حياه الانسان من الحاجات المهمه انك تقعد قدام الله وقت طويل انك تقعد قدام ربنا Before the Lord in prayer, and to have this conversation in prayer, it's not just that he can be in five minutes. It's important that you have a decision. It's important to spend time with God. 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 Sometimes we need to do more and more. That we really have a good relationship with God. And this change has to be made. And this change has to be made. And this change has to be made. شوف خروج ثلاثة و ثلاثة في خروج ثلاثة وثلاثين نلاقي شخصية معروفة لينا ورد القصة معروفة لينا بس احنا بنقف عندها بنقف عند القصة دي عشان نعرف موسى لما طلع على الجبل خروج ثلاثة وثلاثين مع أربعة وثلاثين بيتكلم عن الحتتين دول نلاقي موسى وقال موسى للرب وابتدى حوار بينه وبين الرب انظر أنت قائل لي يصعد هذا الشعب وابتدى يحكي معاه بتفاصيل طلع هذا الشعب وانا عشت وشفت تحديات صعبة وانت معاه وحاجات كتيرة So many things the Lord told him. Look at verse 18. It says, "Then Moses said, 'Now show me your glory.' And where is he? He's on the mountain. He's talking. And the Lord said, 'I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and have compassion on whom I have compassion.'" But he said, "You cannot see my face, for no one can see me and live." But then he says, "I will, I will put you in the cleft of the rock, cover you with my hand until I pass by." And after that, he said, "The Lord will remove me from this place. This is the place where I will stand. So you stand on the rock, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. You stand on the rock, Representative of the Lord Jesus, there is a place in here where you can stand on the rock. Robert, can you, Robert, can you help this man here to get a? Can you help? In chapter thirty-four. In verse 29, we see something even physical. Everything we see is a miracle. 
is after all these things that we've been talking about, all these things, the people can see the change that are happening. This is true change in the life of the people. If you, if this verse of Romans 12, if you, if you, uh, if people don't see it in your life, then maybe there must be a change in you. But look what happened to Moses. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of testimony in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. Who was his... Who was he speaking with but the Lord? So it's not the, long, the longer he stayed with the Lord, being in the Lord's presence, he was, he was radiant because of being with the Lord. And this is what happens when we spend time with the Lord. People can see it, even in us. There's so many things we could talk about in detail. And you can find these things yourself as well in the Bible. How to have uh, a relationship with the Lord. Let's look at Psalm chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1. It's talking about a person that is fruitful. And he has fruit in his life. Psalm 1. And we see the key of the change here. It's talking about a man and a person. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. So what's he doing here? A person that has a relationship with the Lord. He separates himself from the way of sins. But his delight, verse 2, here is the word, the word of God. It's amazing, amazing how it's so precise about these things. Here is the key of the change in this man. So if you're asking for God's presence, if you're looking at uh, prayer and repentance, confession, this is important. So these are the first three things. And here's the last thing we're going to talk about is the Word of God. Because his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. The person who loves to read and, and study the word of God, this is the key to transformation, continued transformation. What is when you ask somebody, what's the, what's the best thing you like to do in the day? You know, me, I like to maybe uh, listen to soccer or watch, watch soccer. So when I ask myself, do I really have love for the Word of God? For God to the point where I seek His Word and want to be deep in His Word? Am I happy to be... Uh, reading in his word on a daily basis. Of course, there are things in the world that you have some wrong to do, but if your love for the Lord's word and for spending time with him is not greater than these earthly things, then it's not going to be a true transformation in you. This is the word of God, and he shows us how to live through his word. And so we want to spend time in it. So the person that is in delighting in the law of the Lord is a fruitful person. He's going to be like the tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and his leaf does not wither. 
Now you see that the sea is the most of the tree that is next to the river or water, and there's water all the time. You see that there's always fruits that one believes are green always. This is the believer that stays in the Word of God on a daily basis, always reading and keeping God's Word makes a person fruitful. So I want us to think about these four things, and as we think about them, don't just think about them, think about doing them in your life. Are you uh, truly seeking God? That you might be a person who is transformed and different from the, the people around us. Will people then be able to ask you the reason for the hope that's in you? So the first thing is we seek God's face. We, we confess prayer. And then, uh, we read the word of God. So let's pray. And seek yourself, test yourself, and see where you stand. Reflecting Christ, then we're living by the earthly nature. God is worthy of us seeking. God is worthy of our seeking. So we need to seek Him on a daily basis. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you and worship you. We thank you for your guidance to us today that we might truly have a transformation in our life and we want to have a relationship with you through prayer, through your word, through, through your words to us and also through confession, true confession day to day. Help us, Lord, to practice in our life a transformed life. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters that there might be a true change in the power of Jesus and the blood of Jesus that there might be a true change in our life. I pray that you might bless our lives and pray for your protection also that we might experience you and know your will I pray that you might get all glory and honor Amen